The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Next on UMass Sports Insider, conference play is underway for Atlantic 10 basketball, and after a record-breaking season a year ago, we'll look at the outlook for the league as UMass tries to make a run at the top portion of the standings. Plus, we'll introduce you to a captain for the Minutemen hockey squad, a tough guy defenseman with the personality of a comedian who hails from a very different part of the world. And you'll relive a reunion on the ice as the current UMass team welcomes back alumni from the past for an afternoon of hockey and fun. Reliving some past glories, UMass Sports Insider, three, two, one, go. You're watching UMass Sports Insider, presented by Office Depot Office Max, Alden Credit Union, Mopre Commerce Insurance, Mohegan Sun, and Coca-Cola. It's going to be a difficult final two months of the regular season for UMass men's basketball. Coach Kellogg's team will be trying to successfully navigate through a newly expanded 18-game conference schedule in an always challenging league. Coming up, we'll go through the top contenders who the Minutemen will have to deal with on their way to a strong Atlantic 10 finish. Hi there, welcome. I'm your host, Josh Maurer. It's our first January show, and also coming up, we'll take a look at some of the craziest superstitions belonging to some Minutemen and Minute Women. But we start with the upcoming race on the hardwood in the A-10, where the teams, including UMass, are trying to recreate the magic from last year's season, which was arguably the best collection of talent and success in league history. With more, let's go over to Joe Duty. It's safe to say the past few years have been a golden age for Atlantic 10 men's basketball. The conference has increased its NCAA tournament berths in four consecutive seasons, culminating with a league record six bids in 2014. I think the profile has exploded uh, with the success of the teams uh, during the regular season and then obviously in the tournament. I think we're getting the respect we deserve now from the media, from our fans, uh, and from college basketball fans. So the A-10 is no secret anymore. It's a top six conference year in, year out. Do people realize how good the A-10 is? And they say, well, hell, after six teams getting into the tournament last year and then the runs the teams have gone on over the last few years, uh, basketball people do. Uh, with teams leaving it, everyone was concerned, oh, will the A-10 dip? And it has only become better. This season, as A-10 play begins, there are more question marks about the league's overall strength. With many of last year's top players having graduated and with teams failing to collect as many signature non-conference victories as they had in recent seasons, some are wondering if the conference is experiencing a rebuilding year. The coaches, however, are not buying that sentiment. Our league is probably scheduled as tough as it's ever scheduled. I know firsthand that that's the case. Um, and so <clears throat> when you do that, you're going to have some bumps in the road. You're going to have some losses. But I think the most important thing is when you look at the RPI. And if we can hold off from having too many teams with 200 plus RPIs, I think our league will be thought of as one of the top leagues out there once again. Last year, at this time, everyone talked about how the league was down. Uh, and then all the league did was get six teams in the NCAA tournament and have a team like Dayton go on an unbelievable run like they did. We lost a lot of players due to graduation, but I do think there's a lot of really good young talent in the league. When you look at guys like E.C. Matthews, DeAndre Bembry, I think there's a lot of really good players that are going to make this league continue to go. For the second season in a row, Coach Shaka Smart's VCU Rams were selected as the preseason A-10 favorite. The Rams, who finished as league runner-up in 2014, went 10-3 and in non-conference play with wins in their final five contests. So we went through it last year. Uh, I think anytime you have that experience, it's something that can help you. Our players are smart enough to understand what happens in the preseason in terms of prognostications. It really doesn't matter. We've got to go out and earn anything that we want to get. I think they uh, have proven themselves year after year. I think they've established a style of play and a program that rivals not only any in the Atlantic 10, but really a lot of teams out there uh, nationally. Besides VCU, NCAA tournament teams from last season, Dayton and George Washington, each compiled 10 non-league victories to establish themselves as championship contenders. A-10 newcomer Davidson went 9-2 in non-conference play while ranking near the top of the nation in scoring. This year, the conference schedule has expanded from 16 to 18 games providing a two-month gauntlet that will test the mettle of all 14 teams. Playing, you know, bigger physical teams night in, night out. 
Uh, I, I used to tell people when I was in the ACC, what you don't understand is what the cumulative toll, what it takes on your team as you go through the season. You're playing St. Louis, you're playing UMass, you're playing VCU, you're playing, you know, just big physical pounding teams. And then on top of that, oh, by the way, they're pretty good basketball players as well. UMass was picked fourth in the A-10 preseason poll. And after going 7-6 and six against a challenging non-conference slate, Coach Kellogg hopes his squad is ready to live up to those lofty expectations with a strong league run. If we can continue to improve our guard play, of, of get those guys to make better decisions, to establish um, our identity, our UMass basketball identity, I think we have a chance to be a good basketball club. But once again, you're in a, uh, one of the top leagues in the country, and to get in that top three, four, and five is, uh, is pretty difficult. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Joe Duty. Thank you, Joe. The men and men will have Atlantic 10 games coming up on Saturday the 17th at home against Rhode Island. Then they hit the road to Philadelphia to battle St. Joe's on Wednesday the 21st. Well, switching sports now to hockey. One of the anchors of the Minutemen's defense the past few seasons has been a giant on the ice with a great sense of humor off it. A native of Belarus, this Minuteman has aspirations of a professional career after his final few months with UMass are finished. With more, here's Cody Kruschel in the bunker with Oleg Yavenko. On Friday and Saturday nights at the Mullen Center, one player stands out for the UMass hockey team. Senior defenseman Oleg Yavenko, who at six foot seven is among the tallest players in Division I hockey. There's always been an intrigue when you get somebody at six seven that can get around the sheet like Oleg does. So right away, everybody's going to come around and kind of kick the tires and see what Oleg's game has. You're a big body out there, and you have to be physical, and uh, you have to be strong, and you have to be mean, and uh, living up to that is can some could be sometimes challenging, but once you make it as a habit, it's it's like just everything else. It's it's just a habit. When Yavenko came to the United States from his home country of Belarus as a teenager, the thought of going to college never crossed his mind. But during his second year playing junior hockey in Fargo, North Dakota, he started considering it. Obviously, I play on a junior team, and a lot of guys are getting committed and talk about it. I find out more about it and. After talking to different coaches and stuff too, it sort of became my goal too because I thought it was a really good uh, step because uh, from what I found out, the league was, uh, the level of hockey was really good and you get education too, so. It's safe to say Yavenko has settled into college. Last year, he was named the top scholar athlete in Hockey East. And while Yavenko is certainly intimidating on the ice, his coach says he's a different person out of uniform. On the ice, he's, uh, he's one player, very driven. Then off the ice, I think he, you see he's you know, very engaging. He's got a great sense of humor, loves to talk. Uh, so, you know, you don't get uh, that edge that you have with Oleg on the ice, off the ice. In addition to developing his game at UMass, last spring Yavenko represented his home country of Belarus at the IIHF World Championship. He was the only active college player to skate in the tournament and competed against NHL stars like Igveni Malkin. Even more special, the event was played in his home city of Minsk. Being on that level and official and knowing how much that tournament meant for our country, that was a really, really special feeling and it's like, it's with a lot of, you know, a lot of times, like when you first time put the jersey over your head, no matter what team you're playing, it's a, it's a special feeling. That world championship marked the first time Yvanko had played a game in his native country since he was 16. Having my family right there and the crowd was sold out and the people, I mean, it's world championship, it's like national pride and Everybody's there, everybody's cheering, everybody's, you feel the spirit. Here in the U.S., Yvanko has been invited to NHL development camps each of the last three years. In 2012 with the Islanders, 2013 with the Devils, and most recently this past summer with the Boston Bruins. Once he finishes his career at UMass, he's hoping to don a professional jersey full-time. Those three development camps, those three different NHL teams that he's been associated with and the national team stuff that he's done for Belarus, you know, has really allowed him to see the game from a lot of different perspectives and get a lot of great opinions and coaching and influence from other players. Uh, and I think that's also been able to push Oleg to become a much better player. Now, I've been around the game for a long time, but still, like even in my last camp, I learned a couple of things that uh, I probably didn't think of before, like defending the 2 one and stuff like that. Where should I be looking? How should I be playing? Where's my stick? Uh, should be standing and uh, you know stuff like that, and even like getting open D to D. It's like the higher level it is, the more attention to small details, because the difference that is made is literally in those little things. And learning them is like 
huge and like you know there's always something to learn I guarantee you like even players in NHL they can still learn like everything that's why the level of hockey is so high. I think the nice thing that you've seen or I've seen as NHL guys have come through the building here over the course of the last year in particular is how impressed they've been with his uh, improvement and development. So there, there's uh, absolutely uh, no question in my mind that there are going to be teams that are interested in Oleg and he's certainly going to have to prove himself in the, in the pro game which is, will be much different for him than the college game has been. Uh, but uh, if he continues to, to stay on the path that he's on and work the way that he works, uh, I'm sure he'll have opportunity. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Cody Khrushchev. Thank you, Cody. What an interesting guy. The Minutemen will be moving back into Hockey East play with back-to-back home-and-home weekends. First with rival New Hampshire on the 16th and 17th, and then with Merrimack on the 23rd and 24th. Time for us to step aside on UMass Sports Insider for the first time, but don't go far away. When we come back, we'll look back at some recent domination on the court by Coach Kellogg and company over arguably their biggest conference rival, taking down the Rams on instant replay. Next. We've been receiving a lot of comments from our customers recently, telling us how wonderful their experiences are and how Alden takes the time to listen to and understand their banking needs. It makes us feel good about what we do. Alden provides innovative banking products and great rates every day. So come into Alden today for a better tomorrow. Alden's here and we love to listen. Alden, banking, no boundaries. Life, it's not measured by the breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Life is the unlimited possibilities all around us. It's the interesting people we meet, the epic places we see, the incredible memories we create. Life is always going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun. UMass was voted the best hotel in Amherst. Situated on the beautiful University of Massachusetts campus, Hotel UMass is where you stay to be in the heart of it all. With 116 contemporary guest rooms, free wireless internet, room service, 36 meeting rooms, free parking, and in walking distance to downtown Amherst, Hotel UMass has it all. You're watching UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back. The Minutemen have the first of two annual meetings with longtime rival Rhode Island coming up on Saturday the 17th. So for today's Mohegan Sun Instant Replay, we're going back to last season when UMass defeated the Rams three times in three thrilling games over the span of four and a half weeks. Each of those victories, Coach Kellogg's team trailed Rhodey in the final five minutes, but it was able to come from behind with some critical plays late in the contest. This block by Raphael Putney helped seal the victory in Kingston. Then some tough buckets by Derek Gordon in the closing minutes gave UMass a three-point home win 17 days later. Finally, the Minutemen made up a double-digit second-half deficit in the first round of the Atlantic 10 tournament in Brooklyn, finishing the game by scoring 19 of the final 25 points over the final 10 minutes of the game to advance to the conference quarterfinals. Let's look back at that comeback. Carter, one-on-one -on -one with E.C. Matthews, double came, he passed out of it to the baseline, Caddy Lalane catches and slam dunks it in. A beautiful find by Samson Carter. Rochelle got the step pass, tipped though, and stolen by Williams. Williams and Root the other way to the rim, scoops it up and in with his right hand. Coast to coast off the steal for Chaz. His first points of the A-10 tournament, and it's 14 to 10, Rodin. Lalane up to Davis. Davis to the foul line, pass for Esho. Esho the catch, lays it up and in! His third straight hoop, good pass, Davis. And now it's 46 to 40. Here's Gordon from Williams, a drive. Put it up, had it blocked, but got it back. Gordon fouled, banks it in! 
Hassan Martin blocked Derek Gordon's first shot. He blocked it right into Gordon's hands. Trey Davis gets the inbounds pass. He goes left baseline to the rim, puts it up and in. Davis, a sneaky drive, only a second field goal, 55-51. Davis trying to stay with Munford around the screen, eight to shoot. Munford pass, stolen by Putney at midcourt. Putney the other way, puts it up off the glass and in. A big play by the senior and it's a one point game, 55-54. Davis looking into the post. Davis on a drive left baseline to the rim. Banks it up and in. And UMass has come from 11 behind to take the lead. Trey Davis hits with three minutes left. And UMass with another Houdini act. They've done it time and again, Tim, and they do it in the 8-10 tournament and come from 11 behind in the second half. They win it 65-61. UMass has played URI more than any other team in program history. Saturday the 17th, it'll be the 144th all-time meeting. And the Minutemen have defeated the Rams six consecutive times and nine out of the last 10. But Rhodey might be the most improved team in the A-10. So this year's two matchups might be the most difficult for UMass against the Rams in recent years. Time for us to take a quick time out. When we come back, we're going to head back to hockey and go to a reunion of old and new Minutemen. The boys are back in town. Now, can they still skate? We'll be right back. Life, it's not measured by the breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Life is the unlimited possibilities all around us. It's the interesting people we meet, the epic places we see, the incredible memories we create. Life is always going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun. A forward-thinking insurance company with a global network. Providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family. Mafre Commerce Insurance. The first name in insurance for more than one million customers. Focused on taking care of you and your family. Providing freedom from worry everywhere you go. Mafre Commerce Insurance. Book your wedding with award-winning UMass Catering. We can host, design, and plan your big event from full breakfasts, lunches, to elegant wedding receptions and dinners. UMass Catering can host events in one of our ballrooms at Overlook Campus, tented outdoors, or our own Renaissance house. The possibilities are endless. Let the culinary team at UMass Catering bring creative menus and exceptional service to your wedding day. Special rates for members of the UMass family and alumni. The Mullen Center awakens. Anticipation builds. A sea of maroon unites. Be here for every big play. Max Yesho dunks it in. For every slam dunk. For every game-winning shot. Oh! Don't miss a moment. And how about that one? UMass Basketball. Get your tickets now. You're watching UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back to the show. Since UMass brought its hockey program back in 1993, the Minutemen have had some great players on the ice here at the Mullins Center. Guys like Jonathan Quick and Justin Braun, who are now in the NHL, have helped put the program on the national map. Well, earlier this season, the current Minutemen welcomed back many of its alumni for a weekend of fun and hockey in Amherst. Let's take a look. The UMass Hockey Alumni Game offered over 40 former Minutemen a chance to brush off some rust, lace up the skates, and catch up with some old friends on a Saturday morning at the Mullen Center. It's a good day to come out and uh, see all the guys that you haven't seen before. You know, see, haven't seen some of the guys since I left uh, UMass, so it's nice to uh, be back and see some old faces. It was nice to have guys uh, back from the 70s that, uh, that came and skated, uh, some for the first time in a number of years, just at any point, let alone on Mullins ice. Uh, but to get them back for the game and to have them be in the locker room, some guys had never even seen the locker room here since Mullins Center has been renovated. It was nice to have that many faces here with their families as well. It's a good time to get back, you know, and kind of talk about the reminisce about the old times. And uh, it's really just a good time to kind of, you know, talk about the boys, be with Jeff Lang over here. 
now it's just good to get back, you know, um, see what the guys are doing, see where the program's heading. While the alumni game hasn't been played every year, head coach John Micheletto and the former Minutemen are hoping it becomes an annual event. It's been kind of off and on for a long time, but with the new guys coming in, we see a lot of enthusiasm with them. So we're hoping that they really, uh, we get some traction on the younger guys and the old, the old guys like us can, can just show up and enjoy ourselves. The game itself wasn't exactly a defensive struggle, but with three decades of former Minutemen skating together, there were definitely bragging rights at stake. I think everyone's uh, pretty competitive out there. As soon as you throw the puck down, uh, you know, guys want to have some fun and, uh, and, and do their best. Uh, it's nice to be able to come back and and uh, pretend that we can still wheel around the, the big sheet here. I tried hanging in with the, the younger guys for a little while and uh, found myself back with the older guys. So They were certainly more competitive than we were. We're just happy to be able to breathe when we come off the ice. So there's a different standard that we have. I think those guys are trash talking and doing all kinds of stuff. So we had fun. And R.J. Gates, who skated at UMass from 1997 through 2001, uses the game as an opportunity to show his family where he got his start. Now I have uh, the three kids, so we make it a, a yearly routine that we come up, especially for the alumni, uh, or at least for one weekend that uh, we come back. So, um, you know, my boys, uh, you know, they always ask when we're coming back to Amherst, so they're able to understand. They get to, you know, go through the locker room and, and uh, meet some of the guys, and they think it's fun to, to go on the bench and high-five each other, and so it's nice to share with them. For me, it's the history and tradition of UMass hockey. I mean, it goes back many, many decades, and when you come back and look at all the the things on the walls and seeing the guys, you really know that you're part of something that's been around for a long time. So that's kind of special. Hi, I'm Riley McDougal on the UMass hockey team. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but coming up after the break, we're going to find out what some of my teammates' superstitions are. Life, it's not measured by the breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Life is the unlimited possibilities all around us. It's the interesting people we meet, the epic places we see, the incredible memories we create. Life is always going on. All you have to do is choose to live it. Full of life, Mohegan Sun. At this rate, you can get that new car. Low, low rates on auto loans. Alden Credit Union. Banking. No boundaries. At Alden Credit Union, our home loans leave room in your budget for some fun. You can get the kitchen you want, have space for a new friend, and still afford a night out with old friends. At this rate, you can have it all. 2.49% APR on all home loans. Hotel UMass was voted the best hotel in Amherst. Situated on the beautiful University of Massachusetts campus, Hotel UMass is where you stay to be in the heart of it all. With 116 contemporary guest rooms, free wireless internet, room service, 36 meeting rooms, free parking, and in walking distance to downtown Amherst, Hotel UMass has it all. Center awakens. Anticipation builds. A sea of maroon unites. Be here for every big play. Max Yesho ducks it in. For every slam dunk. For every game winning shot. Oh! Don't miss a moment. And how about that one? UMass Basketball. Get your tickets now. You're watching UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back. It's time now for the best part of the show, when I stop talking and we turn it over to the athletes. It's the Alden Credit Union lighter side. Today, we wanted to find out some of the biggest idiosyncrasies for some minute men and minute women. So we asked them, what's your biggest superstition? Let's check out the answers. 
Yeah, ever since I can remember, I've always tied my left skate first, and uh, I always put my left elbow pad on first. Well, I'm left-handed with my writing, but as far as shooting with hockey and everything else, I'm right-handed, so it's kind of kind of odd. I have to make a wish at 11-11. All the time, every night before I go to sleep, I have to make a wish at 11-11, even during the day. To be honest, I had a very, very good game, and I was wearing these knee-high, um, uh, like, luckily, Irish socks, and they had clovers all over them, and they're very noticeably obvious when I wear them, but I still wear them sometimes. <laughs> I guess I kind of, before I come to the rink, I shower kind of at the same time, stuff like that. Eat at the same time, just keep a routine more than a sort of superstition. It's kind of weird, but when I play well in a game, I won't shave my legs after. Just <laughs> so that, like, I feel like that's like a part of my game that was helping me, so, I don't know. What would happen, do you think, if you put, you put your right right pad on or tied your right skate for I don't know. It's, it's always gone through my head where I should try it or something, but then I feel like I might get hurt or something bad is going to go on, so I, uh, I avoid doing that. How did this start? I couldn't give you a moment or a time, but I've been doing it for a while now. I just always make a wish at 11 11. I can give you a time. It was probably 11 11 one day. <laughs> Probably so, uh, probably so. <laughs> Are basketball players superstitious generally? Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, I would say so. I mean, I've worn the same shoes, and even though, like, no matter how old they are, I just keep wearing them because I do really well in them, so why not? So, like, you look at the clock, and you're like, uh-oh, i got to shower right now. Well, it's kind of involved with my nap, so when I nap, I usually get up around the same time, and then I just hop in the shower. <laughs> okay, I have so many follow-up questions, <laughs> but I will start with how did that begin? Probably out of laziness. I just didn't want to shave my legs, and I was like, I can't shave them now since like I played well. This is part of me. So, why do you think athletes, maybe hockey players in particular, are so superstitious? Um, you know, I, you can talk to most guys, and most guys will say they got some sort of superstition. Um, and I, I'd say it's just because we're a weird, weird breed. So, is it a different wish every time? Yeah, it's something different every time. I mean, same principles, but I mean, might add a little something to it every now and then. But why, why do people think that matters? Come on, I'm asking you to play psychologist. Um, because I correlate good memories with it, I guess, yeah. Okay. It's decent enough piece. <laughs> I don't know. So what happens if you don't nap, shower, and get dressed at the same time? It throws me off. No, I'm, uh, no. no you're done for. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. <laughs> now, how long could this go on for, though? No, usually like, not. Like if you had like three good games in a row, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're looking at like the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> well, it started in AAU, which we had tournaments like over two day weekends. So it wasn't like a long period of time. So the most it's been is like three days. Not really much explanation to it. Um, you know, you, you go through our locker room and you'll find a bunch of different guys that do a bunch of different stuff or they keep their stick somewhere, or do something else along those lines. So. so you've got to make essentially two wishes a day, every day for life. Yeah, that's basically what it is. That's what I'm doing. We need to get you a genie or something. That will help. That will work. <laughs> Do your teammates find this strange? I actually haven't told anyone about it yet. This is the first time they're hearing about it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Very superstitious indeed. That'll do it for this edition of UMass Sports Insider. Our next new show debuts on Saturday, January the 24th. Until then, we say have a great rest of your weekend. I'm Josh Mauer. Thanks so much for watching. UMass Sports Insider is presented by Office Depot Office Max, Alden Credit Union, Mafre Commerce Insurance, Mohegan Sun, and Coca-Cola.